What is good Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be talking about the one and only Tesla stock, what you should be looking out for for the future. I'm also going to do some in-depth technical analysis and give you guys my price prediction for Tesla based off what the charts are showing and based off what the data is suggesting. I'm also going to talk about what the news is saying about the markets that could really affect us going forward, what Kathy would said about the markets too, what the news is saying about Tesla and what the VW boss said about the man, the myth, the legend, Elon Musk, which will be huge for the future. Now, before I break any of these articles down, before I talk about what on earth is going on with Tesla and what I see the share price doing for tomorrow and the near term future, I do have to mention a couple of things real quick. Firstly, I'm not a financial planner, so don't take any of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. And the last thing is, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link down below in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you're guaranteed six free stocks each worth up to $2,000. And you could always sell these six free stocks for cash and use that cash to buy some Tesla shares for free and this limited time offer that ends in just two days so once again the offer is almost gone get those free stocks while you can with that out of the way let's get on with the video so looking at tesla we're currently down about five percent for the day and a little bit red in the after hours as well so that's an indication that we do have a little bit more potential downside but there was something very important i mentioned yesterday and that is looking at the spy so the reason i talk about the spy in the nasdaq is because the market is even more collective than ever meaning when the, the when the spy is down we tend to see the NASDAQ down too, and they tend to be very correlated with Tesla, at least during this market. So one of the things you'll notice is that the, the SPY does have more potential downside coming for tomorrow, and I'm going to show you why I think that. So in my video from yesterday, I did talk about why on earth I thought it was very possible for the SPY to kind of hold up, but I mentioned this very key zone, and that's that $385 level around that range. And I told you that if we broke below that, things would not be pretty and we'd see the SPY end up dropping even lower and that could possibly take Tesla down. That is what ended up happening. Now, I didn't predict that that would happen, but I did call that out as a possibility. So looking at the SPY, what you'll notice is that the SPY has this gap right here and this gap down here is going to most likely take us to that 378 range. Now, will we bounce exactly there? I think that's a little bit unlikely. It seems more likely we're actually going to bounce around that $375 level. So that to me is looking like where on earth the SPY will go to. And if the SPY drops a little bit more, it's very possible that the NASDAQ also follows it too. Not necessarily follows it, but it's correlated with it. So the NASDAQ is a little bit different. You'll notice we have this gap right here and we actually filled the gap quite quickly. But since then, we've been just dropping and dropping and dropping. And it almost resembles this head and shoulders. It's a little bit funky, but at the end of the day, it still exists and it does look like the Nasdaq is going to come down to this key zone right here. So what you'll notice over the last like few weeks, we've been bouncing and holding around around that 11,000 flat range. And it does look like that's where the Nasdaq is going. Now, something else that's very important that you need to pay attention to is this right here. The Nasdaq also has a gap down here that would take it to that $10,800 level. Now, it does not look like we're, we're going to fill it just yet because we, we should bounce off 11,000. If we don't bounce off 11,000, if we keep dropping below that and we can't necessarily uh, hold above it, then we are going to fill this gap, which means more downside would be imminent. But is that guaranteed? The answer is not just yet. We'll have to wait and see how it performs off that uh, $11,000 level. So with that said, this is what's very clear. It does look like the SPY and the NASDAQ do have some potential downside, and that will most likely keep Tesla down a little bit more for a little bit more time. And what you'll notice is 700 was a key zone for Tesla. We ended up actually dropping below that. And in my previous video, I actually thought that if Tesla were to drop really hard with the market, I thought it might bounce off like 710 or 700 at the lowest. We actually went even lower than that. So that to me is a bearish indication, and we'll have to see how low Tesla really goes. And it's very hard for me to actually predict that because what's weird is this thing dropped in this very key level. We dropped below 700, which is an indication we are going to drop lower, but we actually haven't dropped below uh, $685. All right. This is a key zone. Tesla has also bounced off of 685. So if we don't bounce, uh, 
at that level, we can actually use a Fibonacci retracement to calculate where it's going to go to. But as of right now, it's a little tricky to do that since we're actually still above that. But right now, that's the key zone I want to actually call out. So that's that 685 level. If we can't hold that, all right, this is where things become kind of dangerous. Tesla is most likely going to drop to that 680 flat range. And that's another very important level. So 680 to 685, very important zone. If we don't hold that, this thing is most likely going to just keep dropping. And we also happen to have this gap way down here. Now, it would be a little extreme for Tesla to actually fill the gap at 650, but that would be very likely to happen if we can't hold 680. So that's what you really need to look out for. What do I think is going to happen tomorrow? I'm looking for that bounce off that $680 range. I really hope we bounce off that. Otherwise, things could get bloody real quick for Tesla. Now, what am I predicting? Let me just draw that out for you real quick. Uh, let me make the chart look a little thinner and a little bit longer so it's easier to see. So looking at Tesla, this is where things become very, very important. We're at a very key zone and everything comes down to that 680 level. I want to see us balance between that 680 to 685 range. If we can't do that, it's very possible this thing will drop even harder and potentially come closer to filling its gap. So that's what you really have to look out for. So let me show you the support and resistance levels that are very important and how they may dictate Tesla. If Tesla pushes up, we have some resistance off 700 and obviously we're at 690 seven right now and a little bit red in the after hours so that is a key zone another important zone is that 715 range then 730 and 740 so those are the key resistance levels and for support 680 to 685 that's a very very important support zone that's held us off for a lot of time we have bounced off that in, in the past but if we somehow can't hold that things could become very bloody from there so i really hope we hold it i hope things play out well so let me just show you what could happen so because the spy and the nasdaq have more potential downside uh let me actually fix the chart i think something's a little messed up hold on uh just like that okay so if if the spy and nasdaq have more downside all right Tesla might drop into open like this. And we want to see how this thing reacts to that 685 to 680 level. If it doesn't bounce, if we don't get a nice bounce that causes us to like push up, this is what will happen. We'll most likely drop down and we'll potentially end up touching that 662 level, in my opinion. Now, does that mean we'll fill the gap in just one day? It's not guaranteed. We could bounce off 662 before doing that. And then 680 could be the next resistance level. So we could see a move kind of like this and continue to see downside. But it really depends on the market if we get that nice bounce we're looking for and how choppy or less choppy it really is. Now, do I think this will happen? I do think it's very probable this does happen because Tesla's not that far from that 680. And it, it just really is a real possibility based off the condition we're seeing, based off the downside I still see in the SPY and the NASDAQ, it is very much in the realm of possibility. But one of the things I want to talk about is a bounce, right? We could bounce a little earlier, but just to be safe, I want to look out for that 662 level, but I want to put it out there. I do expect a bounce to come for Tesla quite soon. Now, a more bullish possibility would be this thing drops with the market, right? And we actually bounce off 680. We get a nice bounce and we actually hold in this range. We show some strength and we continue to kind of push to the upside, maybe break past 700 near close and actually close a little bit like this. So is this possible? Yes. But is this likely to happen? The answer is no. It's, it's less likely we see a, a big bounce off that. Then again, it really depends on the market, but based off the market, based off SPY and NASDAQ, this does seem a little bit more likely for Tesla. We could bounce off that 662 range going into tomorrow. I really hope we do. It's just what I want to put out there. Now, now when it comes to Tesla, there are some other very important things I need to talk about, and that is the fact that the market right now is kind of pricing in different changes coming out for tomorrow and Thursday, and we have the new GDP and PCE reports coming out that could be absolutely massive from the Bureau of Economic Analysis, and people are worried about them pointing in the direction of a potential recession, and that obviously has led to some negative sentiments, some panic selling, and other things like that, which are negatively affecting the market. So we'll have to see what the data suggests. But something interesting is Kathy Wood from ARK Invest has already stated that she believes the U.S. is in a recession right now. That's very important because we don't truly 
we, we, we can't truly confirm this just yet, but she believes it's already you know, the case. And as a result, this is causing a lot of big businesses to not just lay off some of their employees, but it's also leading to some concerns in the overall sentiment for many people invest in the stock market. Now, I know that this is basically an indication that there will most likely be more downside for the markets in the next couple of months. And that is most likely the case. It's the uncomfortable truth. But despite that, despite the fact that we may enter a recession or we're, we're already in one, maybe, Despite that, Tesla is still a fantastic company, in my opinion, because if you look at 2023, we have the Roadster coming out, we have the Cybertruck, we also have this big deal that was signed, and that is 15,000 Tesla vehicles are, are already in the hands of Uber drivers through the Hertz deal. Once again, fantastic news because the EV sector is growing. Tesla's really getting out there. They're basically advertising their cars even more, and more and more companies are leaning towards Tesla as a big big, big company out there that a lot of people are going to love. So right now, very bullish catalysts are out there. I see the company still growing. So long term, I'm still very bullish. And I do see these potential dips due to the recession and other fears as very good buying opportunities. I'm greedy when other people are fearful. Now, something else that's interesting is when you look at the options chain for Tesla, just wanted to note this real quick. We have 138,000 calls out of the money and about 10,000 calls, excuse me, 10,000 calls in the money. So right now, there's not a whole lot of gamma that's going to really push Tesla up. And for the long term, it seems like there's going to be some, some bearish price action for the short term. Long term is still very bullish regardless of that. Something else that's interesting is the VW boss says that new factories will be will, will take strength out of Elon Musk. So we're actually seeing some interesting words being said. And I, I'm not necessarily taking any sides here. I just want to put it out there that VW is now really, really improving their EV sector, their EV uh, growth. And to me, that's going to be massive for the EV sector collectively. It's going to really, really grow grow this sector and it's going to help kind of ease the the really high demand for those evs so to me remember what elon musk stated he stated that tesla's purpose is not to become just the number one ev company it's also to kind of accelerate the, the development of ev cars for the future sustainability of humanity that's what elon musk stated so seeing competition isn't a bad thing it's a good thing it really pushes tesla and vw to their limits it really helps them push up in this new world we're entering and i still see very bright things for both of the companies particularly tesla for the long-term future with that out of the way I did give you guys my prediction. I do think that some downside is more probable for Tesla, followed by a bounce somewhere along the line, whether it's 680 or 662. And to me, it's looking like 662 does seem more likely to be that bounce zone. So be on the lookout for that. With that's out of the way, thank you so much for listening. Please have a fantastic rest of the day and prepare yourself for tomorrow because a big day is ahead of us. Thank you. Tesla to the moon and peace out.